Previously on Power Reviews. You were sent by Hexagon to infiltrate Alphabet Soup. One, two, red and blue. They wiped your memory? Everything but the essentials. I think we have another tear. I have a strategy. Ooh, are those bananas? You must have given them enough sedative to knock out a Galactabeast. You've never heard of Terra Venture? That it never actually existed? When Alphabet Soup showed up with evidence of the rift. Where did the Galaxy Rangers come from then? A hole to another dimension. I am. We are. T. Omega. No. No. Stop it. No. Look out! <laughs> Initiating recall procedure now. Thank you, Mass. Does anybody want to talk about what just happened to us? Okay! <sighs> and now, Database Rangers Power Review! Greetings, Ranger fans, and welcome to Guy. Okay then, I'll see you guys in the morning. So, Guy, how are you feeling? I've been better. Do you have enough energy to continue our conversation from before? I suppose. What else do you want to know? Well, between getting trapped in an interdimensional void and then dealing with the tears in T-Omega, I haven't really had a chance to get a handle on this whole being the Phantom Ranger thing. I mean, all I really know about where I came from is what I've seen in the show, and after talking with you, I'm starting to realize that things don't quite add up the way I thought. What are you talking about? Apparently, in Guy's universe, the Rift and the Wormhole to Miranoi are one the same, and Alphabet Soup used it to prevent the construction of Terra Venture and the formation of the GSA. You mean the Galactic Space Alliance? What? How do you know about the Galactic Space Alliance? Well, my access to information about the outside world was... limited during my upbringing, but I wasn't completely cut off. But I thought the Ranger series operators were the only Rangers to ever exist in your world. I thought so too, but as we've established, my caretakers weren't exactly forthcoming. Caretakers? You didn't tell him? Tell me what? That's a story for another time, I think. Okay, I'm sorry I brought it up. Let's just try to focus here. Let's assume, for the moment, that the events depicted in the show are largely accurate. The Galaxy Rangers had ties to teams dating all the way back to 1993, meaning that those teams may have all actually existed in your universe. Is that fair to say? I suppose so. And Guy, you had mentioned the Red Ranger mission to the moon. I take that everyone but the Red Galaxy Ranger had been active in your world? Of course. Okay. Now, I know that SPD is from the future, but what about Ninja Storm, Dino Thunder, Mystic Force, Operation Overdrive? All active. Jungle Fury? Absolutely. But they were the last ones who were active before I went undercover and came here. Alright then, so the first 17 seasons are all accounted for. But the first six overlap between the two worlds. So... We're not looking at entirely separate universes here. We're looking at a split in the timeline. Exactly. And right now, the last thing that we know of that the two timelines had in common was Countdown to Destruction. The, the day of the invasion. November 20th, 1998. Right. Something happened after that day that split the timeline. And the feeling that whatever did, that created the rift. Any idea what could have done that? No. But I intend to find out. For now, though, I think we could all use some rest. I especially you, Guy. Let's get you to bed. I'll be fine right here. You sure? I've slept on worse. All right, then. I if you need anything, don't be afraid to wake us, okay? Okay. <clears throat> Aren't you going to sleep? Later. I have work to do. I need you here. Now. Can you please move quickly? Okay. What are you doing? I'm conducting an experiment. Have you been up all night? It was the only way to finish it. Finish what? The wireless interdimensional interface portal alignment device. The what? What do you need a portal device for? Ah, there you are. Kay, talk to me. Biorhythm marker verified. Now open that door. Let's just hold on a minute. Guy, could you help me out here? Hi. 
I'm telling you, I know what I'm doing. It's too dangerous. Look <laughs> out! <laughs> Dude, that was awesome. How'd you do that? <clears throat> I, I'm not sure. Is there anything I can help you with, ma'am? You look like you've seen better days. I'm fine. I just need to know where I am. Well, that's easy. You're at Jungle Karma Pizza. Jungle Karma? Just the rockin'est vegan pizza place this side of awesome. That's impossible. No, seriously, dude. Our pizza is super legit. You should try our Thriller Gorilla special. Thriller Gorilla? Yeah, man. It's like the big boss man says. Everything is better... With bananas. Exactly! Look, I need to know something. Have you heard of the Power Rangers? Of course, dude. Who hasn't? Are they real? Psst. Yeah, of course. I can't believe it. Oh man, you're, you're not one of those conspiracy dudes, are you? I can't believe how many people think it's one big hoax. Twenty years, man. I bet they don't think we landed on the moon either. No, that's not what I... Your boss, is he here? Can I speak with him? Sorry, no can do. He's out west at the home office. Anything I can help you with? No, I need to go. I need to find... <clears throat> Hold on, dude. You're in no shape to be going anywhere. But... No buts. Look, I'll make you a deal. It's a slow day today, so I'll let you rest up here for a bit. We can share a Thriller Gorilla, and when you're done, you can go wherever you like. Okay? I don't know. I'll even sweeten the deal. You want to know about Power Rangers? I'll tell you a story. Hey, can we get it number 27? All right, it's about the Power Rangers Jungle Fury. I call it Tigers Fall, Lions Rise. Now, I used to hear news about these guys all the time. They had these awesome Jungle Cat Spirit Animal Zords and jet-powered Jungle Master Modes that let them fly all over the place and blast the bad guys. But I don't want to be calling them by their colors or their spirit animals all the time, so let's come up with some names. And I'm just pulling these out of my head here. Let's call the Red Tiger Ranger Casey, the Yellow Cheetah Ranger Lily, the Blue Jaguar Ranger Theo, the Violet Wolf Ranger RJ, and the White Rhino Ranger Dominic. They might have had a friend called Fran, and they fought against the evil forces of Daishi and his servant Camille. They had all kinds of shiny weapons and brightly colored finishing moves, and could use the powers of their ancient masters to summon the Elephant, Shark, and Bat Spirit Rangers. And just like any other ranger team, they had a variety of jumbo-sized megazords and loved doing kung fu poses. And this is all just conjecture. Just gotta read between the lines, man. Hey dude! Could you turn down the Blink-182 over there? I'm trying to tell a story here. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. One day, they were walking through the forest, talking about how Casey had started teaching a kung fu class for kids, when Theo and Dominic started horsing around. Come on, guys, save it for the Phantom Beasts. Casey told them. You see, the Phantom Beasts were these ancient, evil, rinsen powered baddies that Jellica, the sea overlord, had released from the Crystal Eyes a while back, in an attempt to overthrow Daishi and become the big kahuna after her buddies Grizaka and Carnosaur had been the big one. But instead, they decided to ditch her and team up with Boston leading into this whole thing with the Ancient Masters and Spirit Rangers. But none of that really plays into this story. Riveting. So RJ decided to let Casey show off his teaching skills, starting with the element of surprise, which really didn't go all that well for him at first, until he popped out from behind a bush all decked out in his ranger gear, queuing up all the others to summon their spirit animals and morph too, and kicking off a crazy morph battle training free-for-all. So much for saving it for the Phantom Beasts. Speaking of which, Daishi had decided that Casey's tiger spirit was one tiger spirit too many, and sent Phantom Beast General Weiger off to settle the score. I take it he had the tiger spirit as well. Very observant, man. Very observant. Now, in the forest, there was this kid on a bicycle. Let's call him... Jimmy. He spotted the rangers doing their training thing, and decided to tell all the other kids about it in his kung fu class later that day. Unfortunately, they didn't believe him. Saying things like, Did they ask you to join them and become... Nerd Ranger? Actually, I'm pretty sure that role might already be taken. And even when Casey showed up to teach the class, things didn't really get a whole lot better for little Jimmy. Can't fight Lang on your back, Nerd Ranger. Creative kid. Now, Casey spotted this and broke it up, but he wasn't really sure how to handle it. So later, when he's jogging with RJ, who happened to be his master, by the way, in case I hadn't mentioned that. You didn't. He asked him about it, and the wise wolf ranger offered the sage advice. Who is weaker? 
the, the kid getting picked on or the bully who bullies trying to cover up his own feelings of weakness. Well, that doesn't sound even remotely helpful. No, I guess not. But it does sound really deep, doesn't it? Anyway, after that, the master inspired his student to run up to the next cliff by challenging him to a race that totally wasn't really a race, which Casey didn't realize until he had already won or lost, and depending on how you look at it. Because during that moment of separation, Weiger attacked and drained the unsuspecting Red Ranger of his spirit, and he would have finished the job too if RJ hadn't morphed and come to the rescue just in the nick of time. And Weiger was all like, Spirit of the White Tiger! And RJ was all like, Whoa! He has the spirit of the tiger! I'm not sure why he was so surprised by this. So those two dudes duped it out, but Weiger was able to give RJ the slip. So he caught back up with Casey and helped him back to their home base. Can't believe you're attacked by a phantom beast out of nowhere. I can't believe he has a tiger spirit, just like yours. I can't believe RJ's letting you sit in this chair. I can't believe that you let this guy eat here for free. Don't get used to it. I'm having a moment of weakness. Now, do you need help with that? I'm fine. Let me take a look at that shoulder. I told you, I- <clears throat> Relax, I know my way around pressure points. What are you- <sighs> There we go. Good as new. I It should be a lot easier to eat that pizza now. How did you? Like I said, I'm good with pressure points. Now, where was I in our story? Oh yeah, Casey was trying to summon his tiger spirit, but couldn't. So RJ caught them all up on the background of the Phantom Beasts. How they opposed Dai Shi in the Beast Wars 10,000 years ago, and how teaming up with him would mean big time bad news for everyone. You know how awkward those 10,000 year reunions can be. Speaking of which, after Weiger had a chance to return to Daishi and show off some of his sweet new tiger-style moves in one-on-one -on -one combat, the big bad and his generals decided that it was finally time to make their partnership official. So Weiger, Scorch, and Snapper pumped their leader chock full of shiny golden Rinzen power, fully converting Daishi into the Phantom Beast King and giving him some shiny new golden griffin-styled armor. Then, since he was feeling particularly generous that day, he decided that his first command would be to make his loyal subject Camille into the fourth Phantom Beast General, with the shiny golden power of the Phoenix. That's a lot of shiny gold. Yeah, it seemed to be their color scheme. I bet they were all autumns. Anyway, Casey tried to take his mind off the whole spirit-sucking impending doom thing down at the community center with his students, but the attack from before was seriously taking its toll on him. So he decided to take a break from his one-on-one -on -one match with a Wing Chun dummy and commanded that Jimmy and Todd go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some sparring. You know, I hear it's a good way to keep yourself sharp. I wouldn't know. Unfortunately, things didn't go all that great for Jimmy. Although he did manage to get in a few good hits, Todd was quick to knock his feet out from under him and intimidate him further with his words. You can't beat me. You're nothing. But Casey caught up to him later to tell him that it's the bully's words that were beating him, not his fighting and that he managed to spot something else during the fight. You've got the tiger spirit. He said. You can tell a lot about a person by their animal spirit. You, for instance, I bet you have the spirit of the honey badger. I really don't care. So later, he met up with his teammates back at their base, which we'll just say doubles as a pizza parlor. Really? Hey, you try convincing the Ninja Turtles that that wouldn't be an awesome idea. Now, the moment that Casey got there, he received this crazy mind meld from Weiger, inviting him to the field of battle at the local quarry. Speaking of which, how's your head doing? I've been better. Hey dude, have we got any of those herbs left? Herbs. Don't worry, external use only. Totally organic. Now, the other rangers were worried that Casey wasn't up to getting back in the spandex saddle, so they all decided to go fight Weiger in his place showing off their unmorphed kung fu moves for a while and getting batted around until Dai Shi showed up with his shiny new duds and the remaining Phantom Beast generals in tow. Let me guess. Morphin time? Totally morphin time. We're talking full-on battle royale. Weiger versus the Violet Wolf Ranger. Snapper versus the Jungle Master Blue Ranger and White Rhino Ranger. Camille versus the Jungle Master Yellow Ranger. And Scorch and Dai Shi? Well, they just stood there. Super menacing, though. So after they had proven their point, which I guess was to show that they could destroy the rangers if they really wanted to, but for some reason or another didn't really want to, Daishi gave them one last fiery blast and left with his generals. Back at home, the rangers tried to reassure Casey that he wouldn't have been much help, but that really didn't do much to change the fact that he was feeling totally useless without his tiger spirit. 
Now this is where RJ laid down some serious knowledge. You got it all wrong. Your spirit doesn't make you stronger. You make your spirit stronger. Think about it. Deep, right? Oh, thanks, man. Now let me take a look at that head. So Daishi decided to send Weiger to finish off the job on Casey. Even though he apparently could have just destroyed the team earlier without any difficulty. Hey, who's telling this story anyway? Now hold still. Weiger hit the streets and spooked off Casey's young students, summoning his opponent to the scene. But not wanting to blow his cover, the depowered Red Ranger ducked back around the corner to call up his friends and morph to action. Unfortunately, that second part didn't work out so well, and the other four Rangers were left to fight Weiger on their own. That part also wasn't working out so well. But it looks like I don't have to describe to you what losing a fight looks like. Hey! I said hold still. Fortunately, Casey remembered RJ's words, and with a fierce determination, he managed to find the strength within himself to morph all the way to jungle master mode and join the others in battle. It still wasn't enough to charge up their claw cannon, though. Luckily, Jimmy was still nearby and overheard the whole thing, so he ran up to offer his tiger spirit to finish up the charge and majorly blast Weiger. <clears throat> Let me guess. Still didn't finish the job. Does it ever? Weiger used his Rinzen power to grow super giant. So the Rangers summoned the Wolf Pride Megazord, Jungle Master Megazord, and Rhino Steel Zord's Warrior Mode to take him on, before combining them all for a massive stampede to knock him back down to size. And I'm sure that restored Casey's Tiger Spirit and everybody lived happily ever after. Wrong. Casey was still heavily drained by the whole experience, and Weiger and Scorch were left wondering how they would explain their failure to Dai Shi. The only true happy ending was for Jimmy, who had gained the respect of his peers by helping the Rangers. And when their next Kung Fu class came around, he was rewarded with first pick on training partners, choosing Todd, not out of revenge, but out of a desire for them to learn from one another and learn to be friends. And that's the end of the story. So, what did you think of it? Well, it's not exactly what I was expecting. What do you mean? In most of these stories, the hero is fully recovered at the end. But here, not only did he remain weakened all the way through, but his opponents grew even stronger as a result. Sometimes that's just how it happens. True. Hard to believe that Daishi let them survive, though. Especially when he and his generals could have so easily finished the job then and there. But I understand that happens sometimes, and you just have to count yourself lucky. Of course, following up a one-sided assault by sending out a single general to finish the job is somewhat pushing it. Well, I've heard theories that Daishi's host body, Jared, had started to reassert control around that time, preventing him from finishing off the Rangers. But... No one's really sure. Sounds confusing. Oh yeah, totally. At least the story of the children in the Kung Fu class was largely inoffensive, even if the bully wasn't very original or imaginative. And it did provide Casey with some interesting dilemmas and added stakes, like trying to be strong for his students and empowering them to the point where Jimmy, at the least, could be of help in battle. How long had he been teaching? I think he had just started. Either way, as leader of the Rangers, it's clear that he's had plenty of qualifying experience. Actually, he was the least experienced of the team. That's interesting. Well, at least it fits with what he ended up doing after retirement. And what would you know about that? Nothing. Overall, it sounds like, despite several inconsistencies, which I assume can only be attributed to not hearing the story from the original source. Careful. You've got a scab there. Right. The story itself was better than expected presenting a bittersweet ending that raised the stakes for future conflicts, while also demonstrating some important lessons, like how a courageous action can earn the respect of your peers, and how, even when weakened and overpowered, the strength to keep fighting must always come from within. Not too bad. You missed one last lesson, though. Which was? Never be afraid to accept help. I should be going. Just two seconds more. But you said I could leave. Just two seconds. One, two, red and blue. Three, four, and then one more. Five will come and five will stay. Six will come on the darkest day. <laughs> I knew it, man. I knew it was you. How do you know me? Big boss man told me all about you. Your boss? RJ. He said that you helped him out one time with a little project of his, and that if you ever found your way into Jungle Karma, it was our job to take good care of you. RJ. The Wolf Ranger. 
He also said that you might not remember him, but that you would definitely remember the magic words. I've been... I've been undercover a long time. No need to explain it to me, man. We of the Pai Shua are all about secrecy. But I gotta say, you hexagon guys even give us a run for our money. Can you get a message to my people? Tell them where I am. No problem. I can even get a team to pick you up by nightfall. I just can't believe I'm really back. Well, don't get too excited. I've been hearing some bad mojo coming down the grapevine. They're saying that a battle is coming. One unlike anything this world has ever seen. Your people have been doing a good job to keep it quiet, but everyone in the know knows it's coming. So what do you say? What do I say to what? I don't know about you, but if this fight comes to my backyard, I intend to be ready for it. And you look like you could use a new sparring partner. I guess you're right. Then follow me. What do they call you, by the way? My friends call me Guy. Well, Guy, it is awesome to meet you. You can call me Master Gel. Shall we get started? Okay.